Hello, and welcome to the Accountability Coach Podcast, where we discuss proven business success principles related to helping you make more money, work less, so you can enjoy having your ideal business and ideal life. And back rack here. Today, we have two very special guests with us who I think you will find to be inspirational to you on your goal achievement journey to creating the kind of business and life you truly want. John and Mark Cronin are the father-son team who founded John's Crazy Socks. John is an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, a speaker, an athlete, and a dancer, which I think is really cool, who just happens to have Down syndrome. John was the first person with Down syndrome to be named an Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. You may know them because John became sock buddies with President George H.W. Bush. Or maybe you know them for having grown a bootstrap startup into a multi-million dollar social enterprise where they have reached more than 12 million in revenue and are the world's largest sock store. John's Crazy Socks is an internationally recognized social enterprise with a mission to spread happiness and show what people with differing abilities can do. John's Crazy Socks have shipped over 375,000 orders to 88 different countries. Now, you'll love their socks, but the socks are just the physical manifestation of the happiness that they share. Welcome, John and Mark. We appreciate you joining us. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. That's some introduction. Thank you. Well, it just gives me chills with all that you've accomplished. So let's just dive right in. All right. Tell us how you actually came up with the idea for socks and how you went about building Crazy Socks. Well, let's go back to when we started. So we're just over five years old. So let's go back to the fall of 2016, right? Right. And our story starts um, in a small log cabin in the woods. No, not really. Um, So it's in suburban New York City out on Long Island. And where were you, John? I I, I was at a hunting high school. I got to be in my last year's school. So John's in his last year of school and like everybody else, trying to figure out what am I going to do next, right, bud? Right. And what were you looking at? I, I, I look at job, program, and school. I got to look up that I can like. And, and, and the John's situation is unfortunately all too common. There just aren't enough good opportunities for people with different abilities. But John here, you're a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am. And, and if you didn't see a job you wanted, what were you going to do? I want to create one. I want to make one. What did you tell me? I said, I want to go over with my dad. I nice fellow seven minutes ago. Which was pretty cool. My, my youngest son coming to me saying, Dad, let's go into business together. I've got uh, three sons, and, and this is one I can work with, right? Right, Dad. <laughs> And whose idea was it to sell socks? I said, my idea, I want, I, I want to create one, I want, I want to make one. Well, you wanted to create a job, but why socks? Why socks? It's fun. It's colorful and clear. I always let me be me. I want to create socks my whole life. Yeah, we used to drive around looking for these socks for John. So, Ann, we figured if John loved these socks so much, Surely other people would too, and we could find our tribe. So there we were. We had the idea. We knew we were going to try to go into this business, and we went the lean startup route. We didn't take time to do a lot of detailed analysis. We didn't do any fundraising to get any financial backing. Instead, we said, let's get something up and running, and we'll see how customers respond. So, John, you already had the name. Uh, yes, I did. I have a name. I have a website. I have an idea. We built a website. We built it on the Shopify platform. We got a little bit of inventory. We were bootstrapping. So you got to make do with what you have. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page. And I would take out my cell phone. And we made videos. And who was in those videos? I am. I'm talking about socks. 
Sock, sock, boy, sock. <laughs> and we noticed something. People were engaging with those videos and sharing those videos. And what day did we open? Yeah, we opened on Friday, D D seven nights, two thousand sixteen. And we didn't know what to expect, but we got what felt like a flood of orders. We got forty two orders that first day. And most of them were local. Like we said, we're out in Long Island in a town called Huntington. And what did we decide to do with those first orders, John? I'll hunt them for you. So we got red boxes, put the socks in the box, and looked at it and said it needs something else. What else did we put in those boxes? I put in a zigzag I wrote it and candy. John sat there and wrote handwritten thank you notes. And we got bags of Hershey's Kisses and filled up the boxes with those. Then we loaded up the car, drove around, and you knocked on doors. I did. You like doing that? I love it. And how the customers respond? Customer loves it. Customer loves it. They took a picture and put it on social media. I get a spread. So that's how we got started, eh? That's amazing. I mean, just to get, I mean, right away, 42 orders and you're driving around. I mean, what a creative idea, John, to hand write a personal note and put some candies in with the socks. That is really creative and really entrepreneurial as well. Well, that, you know, that's a core principle of ours to try to make as personal a connection as we can with our customers. So we started on those first days, but we still do it. Um, now, geez, our latest numbers, we've shipped 375,000 packages, but every one of them still has that handwritten thank you note, still gets candy, though, though we do copy the, the note, right? The handwritten note, right. still gets candy. And if we get an order of between our office and our home, what are you doing with that order? I still doing home delivery. In fact, we were doing two home deliveries last night, right? You like doing that, don't you? I did. Anything we can to stay close and connect with our customers. That's amazing. I'm just curious, how did you find so quickly a manufacturing company, you know, a design company, or whatever it was that you needed to actually create the SOGs and then, you know, if you're not hand delivering them, obviously you're not going to all 88 different countries and then packaging them to send them out. How did that work? Well, when we started, it's just the two of us. And, and I think a lot of businesses are like that. It, it's similar to the Big Bang Theory, right? You start with a little speck of dust, which then expands and you add other people as you go. When we, when we began, we were only selling other people's socks. So we went out and found suppliers. And part of the challenge when we started, we ran into a catch 22. We had suppliers telling us, we're not gonna sell to you until you can show us you have customers. Well, if we don't have any supplies, how could we get customers? So we had to control a few to sell to us. So that first month or two, we were only selling other people's socks. The first sock that we designed was our first awareness sock. What was that, John? A Down syndrome awareness sock. A Down, a Down syndrome awareness sock. And who designed that? I did. And we went out and found a mill in the U.S. that would make that sock for us. And so for the first two plus years, we were cobbling together between selling other people's socks finding people to manufacture our socks on a relatively small scale. And then eventually we found a strategic partner who's a third generation family business that manufactures socks. They've been making socks for 60 years for department stores and for brand names. So we sold direct to consumer, it was a great match. And they gave us the ability to start to manufacture on a larger scale. So in fact, now we are preparing to enter the wholesale channel uh, so we can uh, sell to stores. We are already selling on Zappos. Kohl's has given us an order. They're gonna put us in 800 
in 56 stores for the fourth quarter. And we're able to meet that because now we have a strategic partner who does the manufacturing for us. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, I'm really curious. Tell me about the relationship with former President George H.W. Bush. Like, how did that go about? What happened there? Well, in early 2017, right. we saw an article about how the former president loved to wear crazy and colorful socks. And what do you say, John? Uh, I want to make what I want. You wanted to, you said, let's send him some socks. Yeah, I want to send him socks. And that's something John says a lot. You know, so we sent him a box of socks. And a while later, the office called us, his office called us back and said the president loved those socks. Could he get more? So we sent him more socks. And then he sent John socks. Um, and he started writing to John. So they exchanged socks. The president would then tweet out pictures of the socks that he got from John. And it was a connection there. Um, former President Bush signed the Americans with Disabilities Act. And that changed the world for millions of people. And it made the education that John got possible. And it made John's crazy socks possible. Then when Barbara Bush passed away, his office called and said the president and the family want to wear socks to honor her commitment to literacy. So we sent some book themed socks made by one of our suppliers. And the president wore those on the day of her funeral. And the only communication he had with the outside world was to tweet out a picture of those socks and explain why he was wearing them. Because he used socks as a way to communicate with the world. It was very touching, you know, that he would turn to my son at a time of need like that. And we turned those into fundraising socks and they raised money for the Barbara Bush Family Literacy Foundation. It is very emotional. <laughs> I'm here crying <laughs> at how um, really cool that is. So you have very happy clients, obviously, and a high repurchase rate. Besides the fact that obviously the people that are close to you, you drive by and you do handwritten notes and candies. What else helps with that repurchase rate? I think there are two overall issues. One, it comes in the fact that we're a social enterprise. So we have both a social um, mission and a business mission, and they feed off each other. So there's greater resonance. We, we have an extensive giving back program that's baked into everything we do. We started by pledging 5% of our earnings to uh, Special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I am Special Olympics at me. Right. And then we've gone on to create a whole series of products that celebrate causes and raise money for those causes, like the Down Syndrome Awareness Socks and Autism Awareness Socks. Uh, yeah, and we have our, 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 our Animal League. Right. Pet Rescue Socks and yeah. Cerebral Palsy Awareness Socks. During the pandemic, uh, the height of the pandemic, we made healthcare superhero socks to say thank you to frontline workers. And those all raise money for charity partners. So our customers, when they're buying from us, they're sharing in that experience of the giving back. And we also champion people with differing abilities. So John has Down syndrome and you're the face of the business. Yes, I am. We've been able to create 34 jobs. 22 of those are held by people with differing abilities. And beyond that, we want to show the world. So we create content that we share on our social media platform. We host tours and work groups from schools and social service agencies. We do speaking engagements. We do these podcast interviews. So we're incredibly grateful, Anne, that you're having us on your show and letting us tell our story and show what people with different abilities can do. And we do advocacy work. Uh, so we've testified twice before the US Congress. We've spoken at the United Nations. So that's a big part of it, is that customers know when they buy from us, they are 
enabling us to hire people with different abilities. They're enabling us to give back. The other part is we're always looking to build connections with our customers and create customer experiences. So if you get a package from us, we don't just send you socks. You get that package on the outside, you see John's smiling face. You open it up, you get your socks. There's still that handwritten thank you note. Right. On the flip side of that, you read the story of John's crazy socks and you can read about the giving back program. You get a package of candy. On the packing slip, you see the picture and the name of the person who packed your order. So you're not just getting socks, you're getting an experience, you're getting a little dose of happiness. And we do everything we can to share experience with, experiences with our customers. And at the bottom level, that means we have to be a great e-commerce store. We've got to have a great website. We've got to have great selection. How many socks do we have now? Uh, we have now uh, a 4,000 different kinds of socks. 4,000 different sock choices. That means John owns the world's largest sock store. That's right. We've got to have great products. We have over 29,000 five-star reviews. 96% of our reviews are five-star reviews. And we've got to have great service. We do same-day shipping. An order comes in today by 3 o'clock. It is going out today. We do better shipping than Amazon. And Jeff Bezos, he's not putting a thank you note and candy in those packages over at Amazon. But John is, right? Right. Um, so, you know, you ask, how do you... How do we get that engagement with our customers? It's because we're building relationships and we're delivering on our promises. That's so amazing. Now, I read somewhere that John's Crazy Socks are built on five pillars. The inspiration and hope, giving back, socks you will love, making it personal, and make it a great place to work. How did you both come up with these five pillars initially? Well, those were inherent in what we were doing from the very beginning, right? We have an overall mission to... A spring happiness. And how do you define that? How do you create happiness? I, I create that I, it is gratitude and to for others. And we were able to articulate, you know, it, it was about hiring people. We told you, you know, hiring people with different abilities. We told you from day one, we had already pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. We knew to succeed, we'd have to have great products. And we we're always looking for a way to make that personal connection. We added the fifth one as we went along. And this is very personal to us. We want this to be a great place to work. And if, in fact, we are spreading happiness with our customers and in the community, we have to start here. Our colleagues have to be happy working here. They have to feel, you know, they have to buy into the mission and understand why their job matters. They have to feel respected and valued and put in a position where they can do great work. They have to feel appreciated. If we take care of our colleagues, they'll take care of our customers. So that's where we got those five pillars. And, and I think the key here is we live by those. That spreading happiness, that purpose, that's made manifest in everything we do. We talk about it all the time. That's the criteria we use to guide decisions we make here. Yep. And we're always looking for ways to further those pillars. I'll give you uh, one easy example. We sell socks for diabetics, these high compression socks. Well, one day one of our packers comes and says, you know, we're sell sending socks to diabetics and we're sending them candy. What's wrong with that picture? So now we have a supply of sugar-free candy that goes with the diabetic socks. If we get an order from a military base, we have a separate package that goes to that military family. We're always looking for new ways to carry out or, or really to make, to make those five pillars present in everything we do. That's awesome. 
Hey, John, I'm curious, out of 4,000 choices of socks, what are your favorite pair of socks and why? Um, my favorite sock is a down syndrome superhero socks. Those are my favorite socks because, uh, because, um, because it, because it, 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 it down syndrome superhero socks are I made, I, I, I made as, as if my design, I try, I try a picture of it and I really like, uh, I, 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 me as a superhero. Right. You like it because you have bases on the side. Yeah, sock, I huh? do. <laughs> and he's the superhero, I thought I heard him say as well, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, awesome. We've now gotten a costume for John as Sock Man, right? Yes, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's really awesome. Do you do you show up in your Sock Man costume when you deliver them personally? We haven't done that yet, no. I, I'm not, but not that's an yet. idea. We should try that, huh? Maybe yes. taking a picture with when you're delivering them and having a picture in your superhero costume would be kind of cool. <laughs> oh, yes. That's a great idea, oh, huh? I, I'm taking an idea for that. Okay, we'll make it happen. There you go, <laughs> Sounds... <Wayne. laughs> You're welcome. I can't wait to see that picture. I think it'll be awesome. How do you find John working with your father? Do you enjoy it? Do you get energized uh, by yes. it? Yes, uh, yes, and um, I, I, I really like working with my dad. My dad always, uh, always become, I, I, I always can become. I, 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 I give me, I give me strengths, and I, I he, um, I he uh, please, please me, uh, I, I, I please me, um. I, I I learn curve all the time. He knows. I he knows. I I he knows. I I, I where I become. I I how I success. And I, I I when I work with my dad, I never without without my father. Yeah, we're very fortunate. I I think part of it, Anne, is we both have the same goals, the same purpose. So there's no pettiness because we're driving for something exactly. larger than our, than either of us. And we both know we need each other. I could never do this without John. So that, that makes for a good situation. Absolutely. And I bet when, John, you were saying, and you, you know, you're learning from your dad. I bet he actually learns things from you as well, right? Yeah, he, yeah, he does. I, 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 I he been learning from, I, he, I he been learning uh, uh, to me uh, because he John is teaching me all the time. Yeah, um, he truly is the inspiration around here. You will hear people saying, "What would John do?" Right, um, and that really does guide us. That's awesome. How would we go about buying or at least choosing a pair of socks or multiple pairs of socks? Out of the four thousand that are available, where would we go? How would we do that? I would go at a John's Crazy Socks dot com. John's Crazy Socks dot com, and and no, when you buy from us, you are going to get great socks. You're going to get great service, but you're also going to help us employ people with different abilities. You're going to help us give back. You're going to support our advocacy work. Most of all, you're going to help us spread happiness. Absolutely. And you can follow us or check us out. We're on every social media platform, but particularly Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. A lot yeah. of TikTok, right? Yeah, that. You do a lot of dancing on that. I do. One of the things we could invite people to, Ann, every Tuesday afternoon, what do you host? Every, every, every Tuesday, I host a dance party uh, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. John hosts an online dance party on Zoom. Awesome. You get a hundred people dancing on Zoom. Yes, it's a great time. It's a great, great experience. Um, and so that's, people, that's that's Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Zoom. Yes. Yes. And there's a link at our website. Go to the bottom of the website. You get the Zoom information. And people can also check out our podcast now. I uh, yes, I I you can uh I I. Listening to listen to us, um, a spring have spring happiness podcast with 
Sean and Mark. It's a half hour designed to put a smile on your face. Yes. You get an update on, you know, talk to John about things uh, going on in his life. We share some good news stories. You get an update on John's love life. Yeah. Uh, we tell some jokes. Uh, it's all just designed to make people feel good and spread a little bit of happiness. So we're on all the social media, I mean, all the uh, podcast platforms and there's a, a podcast page at our website. So you can get it all at johnscrazysocks.com. Spreading happiness is important no matter what's going on in our life or the world because we all can use times to smile and be happy. And I would love to dance personally, John, so I'm going to check out your dance party. Okay. Okay. Thank you, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, just thank you for having us on your show. You're helping us with our mission of when we get to talk to people about how we built a business because we hire people with different abilities. And when people see all that John can do, and, and he does have Down syndrome, but that doesn't define him. Well, that's helping change the world. So thank you for helping us, Anne. Thank you. Yeah, it's been certainly my pleasure. And I got a lot out of listening to your story and just really inspirational for me. So Absolutely. hopefully thank other you. people will be inspired as well and join in in your crusade, I'm going to call it, to spreading happiness. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my hope for our time together with Mark and John is that you got value and an idea or two that will help you be even more successful personally and professionally. Feel free to share my podcast with others as it can be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries. And if you'd like to get a short daily fix from me, subscribe to the Accountability Minute, which can also be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries, as well as on accountabilitycoach.com. And always remember to aim for what you want each and every day. Until next time, make it a great day, today and every day. I appreciate you listening.